Peter Leitner, you are a man of considerable expertise on things having to do with national security. You've dealt with technology security issues in the Pentagon for, I think, a full career. You've been one of the most serious and thoughtful practitioners of, uh, of the art of uh, protecting our sovereignty from various threats, foreign and domestic. Uh, you have been knowledgeable and active in countering the threat we call uh, Sharia. Uh, you have been, as well, monitoring developments internationally for a long time. So I want to talk to you against that remarkable backdrop and experience uh, about a couple of things today. One is what's happening in Somalia. We have, of course, much in the world's attention the phenomenon of these pirates operating offshore. Uh, but what do you know about what's going on ashore and the relationship between these pirates who are taking captives, taking uh, ships uh, off the high seas, and the Islamists who seemingly are increasingly in charge of the country ashore? It's different when it was uh, back then when when the uh, when warlords ran the country, these were organized criminal activities, basically almost a feudal system. The country de degenerated into. Those guys, are, for the most part, have been supplanted by uh, by total anarchy in some areas of the country and by the control of Islamist forces in other parts of the country. And uh, and what we're seeing right now is a hybrid of of a combination of lawlessness, anarchy, and and Islamism, you know, going, it's, a, it's the worst uh, primordial stew that worlds. you can possibly come up with. Yeah. And, and it's there in this ungovernable space known as Somalia. And, uh, and it's manifesting itself in terms of the world stage through direct acts of piracy on the high seas. Now, some of these are conducted by, uh, you know, simple rogue elements of organized criminal activity that are, that are doing this simply to raise money, and others are doing it on behalf of a larger cause. And the larger cause is represented by the Islamic Courts Union and the, and the other very serious uh, uh, fundamentalist Sharia-based uh, Islamic organizations in I was going to ask you, what, what do we know about the ties between the local Islamist organizations uh, and some of the more notorious of the Sharia adherent terrorist cells elsewhere operating around the world. Well, there's there's some indication that there's a, that there's a connection. There's definitely communication, uh, you know, co-located training at times. People going, leaving Somalia, coming back into Somalia, where they were in some camp somewhere, being trained by the, uh, you know, by the the more uh, uh, vicious organizations in the world. Uh, is it a, a total direct smoking gun? that says that all the acts of violence that are occurring in Somalia and the piracy is conducted uh, by as a third party activity by Al-Qaeda or some other fundamentalist groups. No, no one can really say that for sure. I think that would be inaccurate. Uh, is there some involvement? I think the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, but to what extent that involvement is controlling events? When you have successes, you have many you know, parents of success. A lot of people come forward and claim responsibility for the successes. When you have fa failures, suddenly the world is full of orphans. And uh, so it, it's very difficult among organizations that are involved in propagandistic activities to begin with and trying to oversell their capabilities and claiming responsibility for things they may or may not have had some sort of an influence over. So it's very difficult to discern. But Peter Leitner, expert on many things, uh, in your professional judgment, would you say that there's a high likelihood or something less that there's not only a religious and uh, sort of uh, programmatic lash up between these various groups, um, even if it's not direct, it's indirect, uh, and quite possibly that funds that are being generated by the taking of hostages, the taking of ships, might be migrating into, if not uh, the jihadist elements elsewhere around the world, certainly the jihadist elements inside of Somalia with clear implications for our national security as well. Well, I think that's definitely a you know, very strong likelihood, particularly within Somalia. Uh, you know, the, uh, 
the, the campaign against Ethiopian troops, which is still going on in Somalia, uh, is being financed by al external elements. It's been funded by Al-Qaeda. It's been funded by, uh, by Saudi money once again. It's been said, there's some indications that Iran has been involved, you know, in, in, in the cleansing of this, uh, this Islamic country of uh, foreign influence, uh, so-called foreign influence. Uh, so I think that there's definitely that pattern. The, uh, the more lucrative this, these hijackings become, the acts of piracy become, the, more the greater the involvement by assortment of bad players is going to be. And the greater the influence of the true Islamic uh, nature of, uh, of some of the organizations will come out. Uh, because it is a primary source of fundraising. With so many other fundraising mechanisms shut down worldwide, or made more restrictive and more difficult to accomplish worldwide. Here's a one is a source of direct this fundraising. Is a growth that, industry. It's a definitely a growth industry, yeah. and uh, and it's one that's working. Let me segue to a, a, a very much related topic that I, I suspect you're following as well, in terms of the transplanting that's been taking place of so-called refugees from Somalia inside the United States into, in many cases, rural communities as well as uh, parts of Minnesota. Um, we've been hearing reports that the FBI is concerned that some of the you know, 18 to 35 year old cohort in those communities are disappearing. Uh, some have been reported to have gone back to Somalia, perhaps for jihadist terrorist training. Uh, some are reported by the FBI to perhaps have come back to the United States with such training and now again disappeared. Others seem simply to have disappeared, maybe even into uh, Jamaat al Fukra camps, for example, uh, terrorist training camps that are uh, profiled in a new film called uh, Homegrown Jihad. What do you know about these elements inside the United States that may be bringing this sort of Sharia program to a theater near you? We've been warning for years in alerting police, particularly among these various expat communities kind of stemming from the Middle East. We were sounding alerts several years ago about the same thing happening among Yemenis uh, in, in various concentrated areas in, in, in the United States, uh, particularly in the Los Angeles area where there's an enormous Yemeni population and where that population has focused a lot of its attention on, uh, in terms of the, the, the professions it settled on, uh, driving limousines. It's almost totally dominated by, by Yemenis. And one of the things that we were concerned is about the radicalization of some of these folks. Some of those folks have disappeared and returned over the years. And when we were, we were explaining to police and, and other uh, national security types uh, about the, the access, the almost automatic access that limousines are granted when they approach a major public event, simply waved on it. Basically, put a squad of heavily armed people in a stretch limo, and the police will simply wave them right through the barriers in order to let them get out and machine gun everybody yeah. standing in line at the Emmy. Scary. And so scary. It, it is very scary. But this, but with the the uh, with the Somalis, they're the most recent phenomena. We saw that earlier as well with the Lackawanna Six in Buffalo. We, it keeps happening and happening again and again. The problem that we have in the United States and in law enforcement is maintaining continuity and maintaining a long-term focus on this as a, as a problem. Uh, law enforcement tends to deal with these things as episodic events. Everything's a one-off exercise. And it's only after there's been a significant number of reports of people disappearing, seemingly going to bad places, and coming back into the United States, or unexplained behavior patterns, that uh, local Anybody sometimes... Anybody starts paying attention. Then they pay attention and they pursue it, you know, as far as it goes, and then they retreat. You know, on this point, Peter, one of the things that I, I was really struck by, and I don't know if you saw this, at the end of last year, the State Department released the findings of a study that had been done at their request, uh, sampling the DNA of members of the Somali community, and they discovered, or at least so they reported, that 80 percent of the Somalis who had come into this country on the basis of family reunification were not, family were not in fact related to one another. So it's almost mind-boggling that we've got uh, not only this problem happening in Somalia, uh, but we've transplanted it to the United States with fraud clearly operating and 
at least against the backdrop of some very sophisticated efforts to provide such people with access and opportunities to do real damage to us. Peter Leighton, let me turn quickly to one other subject, which is, again, uh, not unrelated. Um, we've been hearing lately out of the Department of Homeland Security that there is some grave new threat inside the United States, and it, it doesn't seem to be Al-Qaeda, it doesn't seem to be Somalis, it doesn't seem to be Yemenis, it doesn't seem to be Islamists at all. It seems to be what are so-called right-wing extremists, including veterans who've been returning from the United States uh, where they've been asked to defend their country against some of these very threats. What are we to make of this uh, recent finding and, uh, and, and what should we as Americans uh, be thinking about it? Well, that report that, that was just issued this in the middle of April is one of the most disturbing pieces of political propaganda and trying to an attempt to manipulate uh, public opinion against Americans who happen to be patriotic. So you think As this, is, this is deliberately politicized I, I think document? Now, they, I think they point out that this was actually a product of the Bush administration. So are you, are you saying the Bush administration was deliberately propagandizing? I, I think it's a politicized document. I think it's a highly politicized. And I think it's done by people who are enormously ignorant and fearful of, uh, of, of the unknown, uh, essentially. I think it's a, it, you know, I'm a disabled vet myself. And I don't consider myself or my colleagues, my cohorts, people I meet with, to be any way, shape, or form because they salute the flag, because they sing the Star Spangled Banner at baseball games, is, or any are or, or, or threats to America. Uh, and and but yet that is what's being painted. Now we have uh, the current president who went to the Middle East, visited our troops, and then upon his return, his administration releases this report saying our troops are a threat. You know, returning troops. The mentality of this is absolutely stark and, and mind-boggling. Uh, uh, it's, it's almost as if it's a divide-and-conquer strategy okay, aimed against the American people in order to perpetuate uh, you know, people in office who currently hold office mm -hmm. by, uh, by turning Americans against Americans, creating and sowing the seeds of, of suspicion where, if anything, pride should exist. Are we now, we're going beyond at this point the, uh, the the denigration of veterans that, that that we suffered, you know, during the Vietnam era, when people came back from Vietnam and was spat upon and called baby murderers and all this kind of stuff, baby killers. Uh, now we're now we're told by the government to be fearful of your sons and daughters who just went and risked their lives and in many cases gave their lives and certainly changed their lives permanently because of the enormous numbers of injuries they've been suffering. Uh, and now we're told to be suspicious of them, and it's not just a bunch of uh, nutcakes on the street, you know, left-wing fanatics who are against the war. This is the United States government. This is the Department of Homeland Security, uh, you know, making this an official document. It's absolutely, you know, startling. You know, veterans, well, scan veterans... Scandalous is, I think, the operative word. And, yeah. I gather Janet Napolitano, the Secretary of Homeland Security, has just recently apologized to vets for any uh, implication that they might have found in this document that they found offensive. But, but I, the meantime, I think as you she say, defended this was, the document. She did, and she put it out, and I think they're not withdrawing it, which is uh, right. the real test of whether they're serious about uh, trying to make this right. Peter, I, we're going to have to go. Thank you sure. for your service to our country in your many capacities, and uh, most especially for your insights today. I it's appreciate great to be it. With thank you, you Frank.